Kevin Harvick having a great run tonight. Very neutral all night long as for uh, Kevin. And uh, they thought he was going to be about the same on that last run. Had said nothing on the radio. Kurt Busch has said a little bit on the radio. Most recently, loose on the exit. It'll be a track bar adjustment and an air pressure adjustment for the two car. Clint, uh, a little uh, concerned earlier that he was stalled when he got up so far. And now just trying to get that car so it's a little bit easier to handle on the exit of the corners. They finish up their work. Kurt Busch coming down and they're recycling through the pits. There's a 98 car of Paul Menard as he comes down and uh, make his, making his final stop. All the way down toward the turn one end of pit road. Let's go down and watch Ryan McRae at work. Four car and the one on the racetrack. A couple of Chevys going side by side, and that is uh, fifth and sixth position. Here's a nine car of Casey Kane. He cycled through as our leader in the 17 car. Had another good pit stop, and he's right there on Casey Kane's bumper. Boy, that 17 crew just keeps Matt in the game all night long. Every time he gets a little bit behind, they catch him back up. They have really made a difference on the track for this car. Yeah, and he again, I mentioned this earlier, he does a really good job of getting that car on and off of pit road too, so it, it all works together for them. Jamie? Well, it's really helped that the 17 car has just been stout all night. They've just been making air pressure adjustments, and as you guys know, that makes for a quick pit stop. Four tires on that last one, and air pressure, he just wanted to be tightened up just a bit. There's the progression for Matt Kenseth. You see how far back he was and currently in second position. It has been 14 races since a Ford has won here at Lowe's Motor Speedway. You have to go back to 2002 and Mark Martin was the last one to win in a Ford. And Matt Kenseth trying to change that up tonight. Had a couple of speeders on that round of green flag stops. Terry Labonte and uh, Robbie Gordon. Pretty good battle here. Jeff Burton, the three time Charlotte winner. Joey Logano, the rookie, battling for eight spot. Really solid run for both of these guys. A nice comeback for Joey Logano, as we mentioned earlier. He had to fight his way from deep in the pack after that problem on pit road early. Nice to see Jeff Burton running a lot better. It's been a real struggle for him in days when they've had a pretty decent car. The double file restarts haven't been his friend. Jeff Burton's last win came in this race a year ago, so it's been an entire year since he's been to victory lane. Hard to believe as good as Jeff Burton is as a driver in this RCR team, and it's been that long, but they're getting better and better, and probably one of the best runs he has had in about two months here tonight. Casey Kane, our leader, 252 laps are in the books. Jimmy Johnson running third right now, the champion. Matt Kins is second, and Casey Kane is first. Back after this message and a word from our ABC station. The entire world blacked out. Everyone saw a vision of the future. Now the race is on to discover why. The most talked about new drama of the season is ABC's Flash Forward. All new Thursday, 8 Eastern, 7 Central on ABC. The race tonight is to be the first to get to 500 miles. And Casey Kane is out in front right now. It's the NASCAR Banking 500 at Charlotte, only from Bank of America. After the pit stops, Kane has quickly opened up a 2.4 second lead on second place Matt Kenseth. Surprising considering he had his hands full when he left pit road on his stop. Listen. I lost the, uh, I lost the ignition box getting up to speed. I had to switch it over. That's why it took me so long. That's a good job coming off pit road if you had all that going on. I tell you, that's a heck of a job doing that right now, switching that baby over. And boy, did he get lucky. And boy, I bet he's glad they got two systems in that car right now to keep it going because. He's doing one of the best jobs out there of anybody as far as keeping up with the track and keeping this thing up front. Yeah, you mentioned that earlier, Rusty. You kept saying about 50 laps ago while we were sitting here talking about Mark Martin and his guys keep trying to keep up with the racetrack all night long. They hadn't done a very good job of it. And then you heard him come across the radio and say earlier, Mark needs to, uh, you know, we need to do a better job going forward of getting back up with the racetrack. Casey Kane's done a great job, just like you said. And he looks like the car to beat 
as we go into 70 with about 73 laps to go. Brad, I tell you, I've been looking at all the times out here right now. I guess I'm really surprised about the top 15 cars are running so close to the same speed around this racetrack. It just goes to prove that track position is so important because a lot of guys are doing a good job keeping up with this track right now. And it's obvious they got to do that because it's getting colder and colder, like I said. Yeah. Some of our themes of the night, adjusting the chassis to keep up with the cold temperatures and the changing track conditions and the money stop. Still to come, the strategy and not making a mistake on that final pit stop that uh, is still well ahead. Let's check out some of those speeds you were talking about, Rusty. Yeah, let's take a look at this. I mean, it's 77 miles an hour. Yeah, take a look at 177, 175, 176, 176, 170. See, they're so close, it's unreal. There's not big changes like we're accustomed to seeing. This new car that NASCAR's got is just so close that the speeds are just not way apart. How about Joey Logano? Fastest speed on that lap. Remember early in the race, overshot his pit, went all the way to the back of the line. Greg Zipidelli came on the radio, told him you're going to have to race your butt off now. Does getting back up into the top ten qualify as racing your butt off? I, I, I do think <laughs> yeah. that quantifies itself <laughs> as racing your rear end off. There you go. And Mark Martin back in the uh, 18th position right now. Remember, Mark started on the front row. Remember, they had to make that patch. See the big old black patch they put on the nose of that car on a pit stop after he had some contact and a little accordion uh, set up on a restart back uh, earlier in the race at lap 125. Alan, the thing I'm concerned about for Mark Martin, he's been stalled out around uh, the same lap times, about 30-50s, 30-60s, and the leaders are popping out some 30s and 40s, and Mark just can't seem to get that done. So he's obviously, you know, struggling just a little bit, but he's not way off, but he just doesn't have a little bit of what he needs to get this thing progressing through the field. We have just about 100 miles to go. In another three laps, we'll be at the 400-mile mark. Plenty of racing to go. And again, that money pit stop. How are these final 70 laps going to unfold? We're coming back to Charlotte in just a minute. Casey Kane right there is your leader.